Okay. Checklist. Okay, so we got our passenger brief. You okay. Need a passenger brief. Uh, well, we're supposed to do a passenger okay. brief every time. Okay. Seat seat belts are on the harnesses. Mm -hmm. You don't have your shoulder harness on yet. Thank you. Go. So it's uh, yeah. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do every time. Okay. And I do know how to get out of my seatbelt and out of my door. Okay. <laughs> I know. Okay. So. Yeah. And uh, there you go. Uh, and then personal electronic devices. As far as I tell people, you're welcome to, uh, you know, take pictures, that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. a lot of times we're crew members and they don't, you know, they don't do that with cap. Yep. Uh, air vents. To tell them where they are up there, up there, standard stuff, and we got a cabin air vent right here. Right. Okay, and fire extinguisher sure. location, operation, the pass, the pull the pin, squeeze, aim, you know, mm -hmm. that stuff. Okay, and uh, emergency procedures and exits. What cap briefs is you go out your door, I'll go out my door, we know how to get out of the door, and we'll meet at the tail of the airplane. Okay. Okay. Because if you ended up on opposite sides of the airplane, hey, did everybody get out? Mm -hmm. We don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah. Behind. yeah. Okay. Uh, mission objectives, we know what those are. We've talked about that. Destination weather, we looked at, looking good. Notums, we looked at. Crew coordination, CRM. Okay, CRM and crew coordination, very important for CAP, meaning everybody in the airplane, even if they're a passenger riding in the back, might have information that'd be nice to know for the pilot. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, you know, if you see, you know, what I tell people is if you see me about to taxi into a fuel truck, then don't let, tell yeah. me to stop. Don't <laughs> let me do it, you know, and say, well, I saw that, but I thought you knew what was going on. Well, maybe I didn't, okay? It doesn't matter if I, uh, you know, I have 30,000 hours, well, I can still make a mistake, so mm. I don't have 30,000 hours. <laughs> but, you know, I can still make a mistake. I'm not all-knowing, so if you see something stupid that I'm doing, don't let me do it. Okay. Tell me. Uh, um, and so, and CRM, Crew Resource Management, is what that stands for. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody in the airplane is a crew member, and so everybody has a say-so in what's going on. And, you know, if we're doing a CAP mission, uh, if somebody is uncomfortable and uh, they say, knock it off, then we stop doing what we're doing. We talk about it. And if, if uh, you know, we can resolve it and everybody's comfortable, then we can continue. But if not, we knock it off and, and forget it, go home. Uh, we used to say uh, in uh, EMS helicopters, we had one pilot, we had one paramedic and one nurse. And if anybody in the airplane, or the helicopter in that case, is uncomfortable with something, then we don't do it. We knock it off. We used to say uh, three to go and one to say no. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the same thing with CRM. Sterile cockpit procedures for taxi, takeoff, and landing. We don't do any extraneous talking except about what we are doing in the airplane. You know, what? And it kind of applies to instructors, but it kind of doesn't because we got to talk, you mm -hmm. know, as an instructor. We're talking, but we're talking about not our dog at home, but we're talking about yeah. uh, what we're doing in the airplane only. All so right. that's sterile cockpit procedures. Uh, and if there's nothing to be said, we leave the intercom open for somebody to stay airplane at your right one o'clock, mm -hmm. pull up or something like that. You know, we want the intercom to be open for that kind of a call. Okay. So it's not that we don't talk at all, but we uh, limit our conversations to operational procedures. All right. Okay, and you'll find that the Air Force is very much the same way. Hmm. CRM and uh, uh, radio usage, that, I'm sure they're doing the exact same thing. Yeah. Now, I didn't get a lot of that because I flew single pilot. Oh. <laughs> But, yeah. but I'm sure that they're doing the same thing because the airlines all do it. Everybody all does it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, seat, seat belts and doors were good. Yep. And emergency actions and equipment. Whoever's flying the airplane at the time we have an emergency continues to fly the airplane and uh, performs the appropriate 
action items, immediate mm -hmm. action items. Uh, we'll transfer controls after that if it's necessary, and uh, and the other guy will back up on the checklist what's going on. We do have an emergency checklist right in here. Uh, it is, you know, on back there, there you go. And uh, it's got the emergency procedures from the handbook mm -hmm. in it. Okay. So car peak goes on, that's part of your... Yep. Okay. Yep. I was wondering about that. Yep. So if you have an engine failure in flight, yes, the carburetor heat goes on because it might be that you have ice, ice built up on the carburetor or the butterfly valve in the carburetor yeah. and that can choke off airflow to the engine and the engine can quit. Okay. Now it's not, it doesn't happen all the time and especially with our 180 horsepower Lycoming engine, because of the position of the carburetor, it doesn't happen very much at all. Okay. But I have seen it. Uh, and a day like today actually is a day where it's, you know, 50, 60, 70 degrees. Mm -hmm. Well, that Venturi in the carburetor actually builds up ice because it will, uh, that Venturi, the uh, extra airflow through the carburetor, the extra speed of it also uh, decreases the temperature. Yep. So if you're at 60 degrees, well, the carburetor decreases that temperature about 30 degrees. So you're right there at, at uh, freezing, right there where ice could build up. So it doesn't just have to be on cold days. Yeah. In fact, it's more prevalent on days kind of like today. So kind of off topic for sure. uh, to what we're doing more generally about the carb heat. If you get that ice in your Venturi uh, thing. Well, how are you not gonna know it? Well, okay. well, that and, uh, you know, you put the carb heat on and it melts that ice and that goes into the engine, right? Now you have water in your engine? Yep. Is that but it'll be, it should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Be fine. So the way, so the way you recognize that you have carburetor ice is you're flying along with a steady power, you know, setting and you notice that you're losing a little bit of RPM and maybe it's a little bit and you'll probably you know, notice, oh yeah, just 100 RPM down. Well, what do you do? You normally increase the power. Mm -hmm. And it, it will increase. Uh, and then you notice it again. Oh, you know, maybe I got some ice built up in the carburetor. So you pull this on, mm -hmm. and as you pull it on, you're gonna get extra roughness and extra, you know, maybe another 100 or 200 RPM loss, okay? okay over what you had before. Ooh, okay. But then it'll build back up. Mm -hmm. As that ice melts, it'll build back up. Okay. And then you, once it's off, you know, or it builds back up and it's steady again, not not a little mm -hmm. bit of uh, movement there, then you can take that uh, carburetor heat off again. Okay. So the way I've always uh, known to use carburetor heat is it's either full on or it's full off. Okay. You don't use partial because mm -hmm. that could just allow more ice to build up and then it's not as effective when it melts it out. Yeah. Okay. So, and all that is is a butterfly valve that directs uh, warm air. Mm -hmm. So when we do our engine run up, we will be up at 1700 RPMs. We'll pull that carburetor heat on and you'll notice a little loss. Yeah. Okay. Because the air into that carburetor is uh, more, well, it's, it's, uh, there's less dense air in there. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna, it's not as efficient and it's going to actually look like maybe a hundred RPM loss or something yeah. like that. Take it off, it goes right back. Okay. Okay. So that's carburetor heat in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Uh, why, why were we on that? Okay. Not sure how we got on that topic. <laughs> okay. Well, you just ask about it. Yeah. And that's fine. That's fine. That's okay. good. Yep. So we've got our brakes test. I mean, brakes test and set. Just push right there and then set the parking brake. Okay. It should be the same. Yeah. Just pull it out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. AVX uh, off. The AVX power switch is Power off. switch is off. Yeah. Yep. We want that off, of course, for electrical surges into mm -hmm. our. Into our uh, uh, valuable avionics. <laughs> yes. Uh, electrical equipment is off. Uh, circuit breakers. And when they say electrical equipment, I think they're talking about all okay. these. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, and the PWE. Circuit breakers are in. Okay. Uh, is that in? Yep. It's okay. in. 
that's the alternator circuit breaker. Okay. So you can that, that one is designed so you can pull it out. If you have an alternator that falls offline, mm -hmm. you can pull that out, okay, and try to reset it gotcha. one time. Okay. Um, no autopilot fuel selector valves both. Wait. Oh, right. uh, sorry, I thought you said wait. Uh, prime as required, two six strokes. Okay, and the primer's over there on the side. And it should work just like in Fox Romeo. I well, well, maybe you got... 99 Hotel Victor for priming you. Um, oh, you use the electron. Yeah, yeah, the electric fuel pump. So I've done this once before, but in another okay. plan, I don't remember, though. You gotta, you got to twist it around until... Ah, this, so, see that little knob? Yeah. Well, there's a slot down there yep. below. So, so you pull it all the way out, wait a couple of seconds. Okay, push it Fills in. up with fuel, push it in. I usually give it three shots Gosh. if you're getting resistance that means you're pushing fuel in so okay. that's good and then we'll do our third one yep and then make sure it goes back in the slot and you twist it around so it won't come out All right. yep. okay so you're primed car repeats cold yep throttle open an eighth inch okay I usually find this one takes a little bit more, but a little more. Okay. Yeah, right there maybe. Yeah, maybe a half inch. All right, mixture is rich. So, yep. Flashing beacon is on. Sorry, beacon. Beacon and nav lights. Yeah. Okay. Propeller area. Clear prop. Okay. Master switch. Ignition switch start. Are these the same key? Uh, there's two keys on there. One for the uh, lock on the door. Oh, okay. And one for the ignition. Okay, so uh, once we start it, we'll give it to a thousand. Yeah. Check oil pressure. Okay. So. You're good. Go ahead. So I guess this is a different starting procedure from... Um, yeah, because you start with the mixture out. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. So no, this is different. Here I'm just going to start it and wait for it to go. Right. All right. One hand on the throttle. All right. Just count down from 12 gallons an hour. Well, we're not going to 
is uh, near that much, so nine is about what we normally use. So you can hit continue. Okay. Now let's go ahead and, and let's go ahead and hit continue on this. Now this this display right here with GPS in it is from this radio. This display is to this radio. Okay, or this head to this radio. Yeah. Okay, this one is not a GPS, it's only VOR, localizer, etc. Are you hearing me? Yep. Okay. So so first of all to flip flop this radio back and forth, just like that, no big deal. Very easy. That's actually our Topeka ASOS. Okay. Okay. This is our audio panel of course and COM one here, COM two down here. Yep. Right now we're listening on COM one. And before we get into this stuff, right now we're on uh, 21.9, which is ground control. Okay. Okay, if we want to go to tower, we just hit it. Oh, please. If we want to go back, we just hit it. Right. If we want to change this one, we can use knobs, or we can touch it right. and type in yeah. the new frequency, one, two, zero, zero, okay? Yep. And, and then if we just want to put it in the standby, we can do that and it comes up in the standby. Gotcha. Okay. Flip it up there. No, we don't want that one. So, just to change it from the standby to the active frequency, that's it. So, I'll go back here. The other way to change it is just touch that and then you can use the knobs. And I actually prefer the knobs, especially in turbulence. Yeah. Because you're holding on to something. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And sometimes it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, get it correct. Yeah. There is a little bar down here that you can put your rest your fingers on. Okay. And do something. I also use this yeah. up here to, you know, steady my hand in turbulence. Gotcha. Okay. So all this stuff. What the heck is all this? Okay. Well, first of all, let's look at map. There is our safe taxi uh, part of the Garmin. And so it actually has, and you can go and really take that in yeah. to where you can wow. see taxiways and everything else. The airplane is pointing away from the runway, though. Well, that's because the GPS doesn't know which way we're yeah. pointing. It only knows if we're moving or not, obviously, yeah. you know. So, uh, and we can go out, and we can go all the way out to where we, you know, don't have that uh, the taxi uh, stuff on there, yeah. okay? All right, so that's our in and out as far as range goes on the, the size of the scope that we're looking at right here. Let's go back. Now we've got a traffic display only, but I don't like that because we got a traffic display over here. Really? Okay, so you take the large knob right here and see all those things? Yeah. Each one of those is, of course, a page. Oh. There's a traffic display, there's an MFD if you have something in the waypoints, there's a map again, ah. same thing as over here, and there is uh, the FISB or the uh, flight information and the weather, okay? So you've got lots of different displays. For, for a flight like this, I kind of like the traffic display myself yeah. because there's nothing else on this display except traffic, so it's easier to read gotcha. than this one, I think. But yeah. That's completely up to the, to the pilot what he wants to see. All right. You also have a terrain display, okay? You also have, every time you want to go back to that menu, there's FISB weather, you can get the weather on there. Right now it's still finding our position, I think. Default nav is a nice one because you've got your ground speed, your track, your estimated time in route, all that stuff. You also have a bar that moves across here, just like the bar on the, uh, on the head over here. Uh, right now we're in GPS, and if we, I should also point out, if you want to go to VOR up here, oops, I messed up, default nav, if you want to go to VOR, go to CDI right here, there's VLOC, okay, which would be VOR or localizer, okay. and for the frequencies, if you want to change the frequencies, you know, like what frequency is it on, well, push right there, push there, and there you've got your nav frequencies. Want to go back? There you got your calm frequencies. All right. Okay. Uh, back. So I know this is all uh, default nav and flight plan. If you're putting in a flight plan like from here to Lawrence, 
you just touch that and you got, it knows now we're at Topeka, we'd add a waypoint and we would add KLWC. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we could do that. Uh, go back and go back. And this would be for IFR instrument procedures. And this is nearest airports. Okay, if you want nearest airports or any of those, there they are. Uh, back, uh, you, nearest intersections, nearest VORs, NDBs, whatever you're looking for. And all of these things have some additional data down here that you have to go down or up to see as a screen isn't big enough. Yeah. This is this is a 650, while well, the 750 is about double that size, so it has a bigger screen. We don't have to go up and down as much. But it's also, uh, and then we got more stuff down here, waypoint info, uh, utilities and system, and uh, those are just things you're going to have to go through if you want to know what they do. All right. But most people fly along on yeah. a map, and if you want to go direct someplace, they use the direct right okay. there. Okay? All right. So you don't have to do this, you know, and if you want to change the scale, you use the small knob right here, 24, 48. Yeah. Or if you want to see where somebody is, you know, with more resolution, I usually fly along at 12 mile scope, but yeah. that's personal preference only. All right, so let's go back to GPS on this one. Go okay. back and go to default nav and hit CDI. GPS. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. So now this and this would be navigating on GPS. Gotcha. Okay. And that's, that's what I think most people normally do. Yeah. Okay. And then if you want to go back to the other display, just hit back, boom, and back. there you go. I also noticed just now, because we're still learning this too, uh, let's see, no, never mind, never mind. Okay, so that's basically the operation of this and this, okay? okay. Lots of capability there, lots of capability there. This radio over here does not turn on with the uh, avionics power switch. Okay. That's the way they set it up. This is a new install as well. To turn this one on, they got to turn this up, or hit that, and then it initializes. And once it initializes, it's starting, okay. The other thing about this is it always starts with no volume at all. Okay. So in order to get the volume up, you got to also twist that, okay, to something. And this is basically our cap radio, okay. So we would be talking to our cap mission base or something like that with this. This is our Becker, which helps us find ELTs, okay? So those are, these basically are the things you will use as a mission pilot. But just for flying, you don't use them. Right now, I have depressed COM3, so we could hear somebody that was trying to talk on, on uh, R62P, which is a, a 62P is a, a digital, uh, and it is a, uh, how do I describe it? It's a repeater 62 PAPA. PAPA stands for the, for the uh, digital part. If it was R62, it would be analog only. Okay. Okay. The, the R is a repeater, so we actually hear that repeater that's close, and it'll go further range. It'll go further range. But that's all cap, that's all cap specific stuff as is this. Okay. Okay. We do have a carburetor temperature gauge right here. Huh? So right now it's saying that the carburetor temperature is like 20. 20. Yeah. Feet. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Celsius. So uh, that is, we shouldn't get any icing. If, it, if that needle gets into the yellow arc, that's when you might be anticipating some carburetor ice. Yeah. Okay. All right. A lot of airplanes don't have that at all. You know, and you just, just like I described before. Yeah, just, yeah. Watch. just watch it. That's right. We'll go ahead and pull the mixture back a little bit, and I think that's on the checklist as well. Let's okay. continue more with the checklist. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Uh, there it is, a uh, Yep, so, taxi lights. Flaps go up. Okay. Alright, Adis. Visibility one zero. 
Sky condition clear. Temperature 1.6 Celsius. Dew point 0.6 Celsius. Altimeter 3010. Remarks. Density altitude 1000. Topeka, Philip Billard Municipal Airport. Automated weather observation 1553 Zulu. Wind 170 at 07. Visibility 10. All right. Sky condition clear. The 170. Probably taking 13 then. Yeah, 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 18. 18 probably. Yeah. All right. So and it would be this is taxiway Alpha right out here. Uh -huh. be the sign over here. So just yeah, taking Alpha and then what cross 13 to. To yeah, and it, what he'll tell you is. Uh, taxi uh, Alpha, hold short one three for one eight. Okay. For if we're going to use one eight. Yeah. All right. Uh, got a radius here, boss. Uh, altimeter. What is that right now? Thirty ten. Ten. Yeah, that's right. Uh, zero one zero. Do I have to do anything here? Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we're reading what about nine hundred. What's the field over here? 881. Okay. Uh, again, checking the GPS. Okay, and a lot of times I, I, you know, if I'm just doing a local flight, I'll put in direct, and I want to put in KTOP. So you go ahead and do it. Wait, can you hit this? Yeah, you could. Okay. Direct there, and then notice there's also a direct activate right here. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, contact, or no, what is this? Clearance delivery. Oh, right, ground. We don't need clearance delivery, but we do contact ground. Okay. And that, make sure you're in the correct spot, COM 1, yep. 21 9, that's ground. And I always say, cap, you know, third ground, cap 1495, hangar 1, taxi, for takeoff. Alright. Billet ground, cap 1495, uh, at hangar 1 for takeoff. Cap 1495, uh, tower, taxi runway 18 via Alpha, hold short runway 13. Taxi 18 uh, via Alpha, hold short runway 31. Option 3010. 3010, cap 1495. Alright. Okay, you're good to go and I'll take the checklist from here on out, okay? And we got a taxi check, which is brakes test, so roll forward, check the brakes. Okay, that's good. The heat is good, cabin air is on. You can taxi with it open or leave it closed, whatever. Close it. If I can get it closed, there we go. Okay. And attitude indicator proper operation, so yep. that looks good. Alright, and uh, you can taxi, go ahead. Alright. The rest of our taxi checklist, and normally the observer, if you have one, is going to run the checklist for you. Alright. Let's see, attitude indicator look good. Turn coordinator, turn the correct way. Yep. And HSI and compass, they look good, okay. We do need to we set the HSI. Yeah, okay. we See the red sign, which is the where the hold short line is for runway one three. That he told us to do, and we'll go ahead and turn around into the wind. So what you do is, yeah, ease to one side, and then uh, use the whole taxiway to get turned around. All right, how far away from the hold short side? Uh, just make sure no part of the airplane's ever over it. Okay. Sure. Set. See 
eight seat belt trunk harnesses, mine's secure. Yep. Cabin doors and windows closed and locked. I can go ahead and do that, but I'm going to leave my window open here. Alright. Uh, and uh, cabin doors and windows closed and locked. Flight control is free and correct. Good. Good. There you go. Okay. And the flight instruments and heading indicator. Alright, we do need to get our heading indicator yep. between south 50. Stay about there. Alright, looks good. And uh, PFD, MFD, GPS. Well, we already set Topeka in, so there's nothing else to do right there. Uh, fuel quantity check. Yep, both full. Extra rich. And fuel select valve recheck on both. Oops. And elevated rudder trim set for takeoff, right there. There's no rudder trim, right? There's no rudder trim on this, that's correct. And I would I would tend to have it up here about like that. Okay. Okay, there's a parallax problem when you're sitting up here looking at that, yeah. you know. Gotcha. You're not looking at it straight on. Uh, okay, and then uh, throttle 1700 RPM. Magnetos check. Alright. Good. 100. A little over 100. Good. Okay. And uh, cover the heat check RPM drop. We'll right. pull it on out. Notice you get about 100 again. Yep. Okay. Get back in. Alright. And the suction gauge. Your suction gauge is over there on top. Uh, good. Yep. That's good. And engine instruments and ammeter. And it is good, and your insurance looks good. Yep. Okay. Throttle idle, and then, uh, so bring it all the way out, see if the engine quits. Yep, okay, and then 800 to 1,000 again, all right. if you need to reset it. Throttle friction lock, course is right up yep. there, to your liking. Strobe pulse lights on. So, right now I would go ahead and turn the pulse light switch on. I'd just turn that off, because okay. there's nothing it's pulsing. Okay, and then radio set. That'd be a good time to go to town. Alright. Nope. Nope. That's uh, the top one. There you go. Okay. There you go. Now we're on tower. Now we're on tower, that's correct. Okay. And transponder is at 1200 and uh, all that. We do have, of course, ADSB. Uh, autopilot not installed. Flap set for takeoff, 0 to 10. You normally take off at 10? Okay. Yep. Uh, primer check in and locked. Yep. Uh, carburetor heat cold. Cold. Okay. And uh, takeoff briefing. Now, what Cap wants to hear for takeoff briefing is we have an engine problem on the on the uh, takeoff roll. We'll pull the engine to idle. Use the brakes as necessary right. to stop. If we have uh, engine, you know, if we have an engine failure right after liftoff, we land straight ahead. If we have a engine failure after we're past the end of the runway. And we're still 200 or 300 feet. We're going straight ahead or slightly off to the side. Gotcha. You know, slightly off to either side. And if we are, and then I like to add, if we're uh, 800 to 1,000 feet AGL, which on here is, that's, you know, going to be 1,000 feet, yep. then we can probably come back to the runway. Okay. All right. But before that, straight ahead. Straight ahead. Okay. All right. And then... Uh, so that's our takeoff briefing. Doors and windows latched. And lights set. Okay. okay, go ahead and turn your strobe lights on. And the pulse lights are on. Time record. This is for our little form there, about 11.45. And parking brake release. All right. All right, and that is the B, that's the uh, engine run-up checklist. So we turn back around and give the tower a call. All right, and that give us a little more room here. Yeah, right? that's fine. Good idea, actually. Say one four nine five. Most people say fourteen ninety five. Okay. Uh, and uh, short three one. Ready for takeoff. Run one eight. Northbound. Northbound. 
Okay. Miller Tower, cap 1495, holding short runway 31, uh, takeoff 18 northbound. Cap 1495, Miller Tower, cross runway 13, and wind variable at 5, runway 18, clear for takeoff northbound. Runway 18, clear for takeoff, cap 1495. Okay, good. And then we have a takeoff checklist. Okay. Drop set zero to ten. There are ten. Cover heats cold. Yep. Mixture is rich. Yep. Engine instruments. Uh, we'll check in the green. Rotate at fifty-five. Climb seventy-five to eighty-five. Okay. Now how do I? Okay, right here. Fourteen ninety-five. Yep, okay. Lower left of the runway departure end. What's, what did you say? I don't know. Oh, mower, mower. Oh, okay. To the left. Cap fourteen ninety-five. Just say cap fourteen ninety five. Sorry, what are you saying? Cap fourteen ninety five. Copy the more. Okay. <laughs> cap flight fourteen ninety five. So uh, left to right, your discretion for northbound. All right. Cap fourteen ninety five. We'll go left. Airspeed alive. Okay. Forty knots. Clear of obstacles, flaps up. Okay. And actually, cap says 70 knots. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, 70 knots? Yeah. Uh, VY is 75, correct? VX and VY, yes. VX is uh, 57 and VY is 76. Alright, we have VY. Left here at 100 feet. performance here. 
here, do we just typically fly at 24,000? Yep. Yep. Gosh, this thing wants to climb. Yeah, we're pretty light. Cruise checklist then is uh, power 2127 under elevated weather trim adjust, yes, of course. Mixture lane, we'll, we'll just leave it up right now. And engine instruments and fuel check. Yep. And heading indicator check. I will warn you that the heading indicator seems to get off pretty quickly in this okay. airplane. I think it's getting kind of old, but it's still within limits. Most of the time. Lights is required. This is when I would get off and get the pulse lights off and leave everything else on. Yeah. And flight plan activate. Well, we already did that. Position and transition over to landing on the side. Cruise check was complete. We're out of the class B, you can see right there. And uh, so we're looking pretty good. Let's do a couple of clearing turns. Cap is real big on clearing turns. Alright. Just like your check ride. Yep. Yeah, roll out. Yeah. All right. 
slow fly. Okay. Now, with the color of heat, any time you go below the green arc on the... Yep. Uh, pull the color of heat on. Okay, we got about 18. Below okay. 110, flaps 10. Okay. Back on the north heading here. All right, we're in the right arc, flaps 2. Flaps three. Okay. As you're slowing down, why don't you give me a right turn to heading of uh, east? Alright. Uh, I gained a lot of altitude here. Let me get back down to 3,000. Alright. I'll keep a current heading while we do that. Okay. That's fine.
appreciate how they taught you to do it before, but uh, I always say, okay, bring the power back, I'll wear heat on, because we're below that 2100, yep. and then as you slow, uh, maintaining altitude, as you slow down to rotation speed, about 55. Both end. Both of them in as you pull the nose up. Gotcha. And I wouldn't be necessarily real fast about bringing that power in, because yep. you want to, you know, you don't want to hang on the, uh, you don't want to hang on the prop for a real long time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Nice 55. Yep. And as you bring the nose up, there you go. And as that power comes in, you got to put in that right rudder. Yeah, you remember.
understand that many of that called heat when you go below. Yeah, I was trying to stay in the green arc. Oh, okay. Okay. I can't see the green arc from here. Oh, I can only yeah. guess where it is. <laughs> Parallax again. Yeah. Okay. I've got the airplane. All right, you're I have the controls, and we're going to do some unusual attitude recoveries. So I'll give you a couple first here, and if you look in your lap right now. All right. Okay. Why do we want to 
climb to 2,000? Yeah, at least, I'd say 2,500. I like to give myself a little bit of extra time in case the engine does quit. Yeah. Do you remember what the minimum altitude for cat flying is? I think it's 1,000. You're correct. 1,000 in the daytime, and what is it at night? Do you oh, remember that? No, I don't. That's 2,000. 2,000 at night, okay. Yep. And that uh, doesn't apply to our training, right? Well, that's correct. I mean, when we do an emergency procedure like yeah. that.
for a landing checklist too. Okay, so we got C, C belt shore harnesses are secure. Fuel selector valves on both. Yep. Mixture rich. Cover the heat. Uh, full, full heat, of course. Yep. I don't see that helicopter yet, but he's. Uh, you're not at it. Cap 1495 on a 18 one zero seven. Production number two. Follow helicopter now. Short bottom option. Uh, what am I telling him here? Uh, Cap 1495 on number two. Cap 1495 on number two. Cap 1495 on number two. Okay, so let's see where was I? Mixture rich, cover heat uh, on. There we go. Autopilot's not installed, airspeed 65 to 70 with the flaps up, or 60 to 70 with the flaps down. Alright, so I'm going to use caution, a uh, tractor in the grass, left side is approaching uh, runway and will be off the runway, but no angle on the uh, departure into the runway. That was for us again? I'm not sure, but that was for him. Or you could say, cap 1495, all inside. We're on site, Cap 1495. Trim adjust, touchdown on the main wheels, landing wheel on you. Okay, roll the nose uh, gently and braking minimum required. And since we're doing a touch and go, oh, I know probably don't need it. Right. Yep, braking. Welcome to your heads up, Papa. Runway 18, wind 1707, good option number two, phone set, no, short bottom. Awesome. There for the option one eight, we have traffic in sight, number two zero hotel number. Got seventy. What did you guys normally do over there? Seventy? Yeah, seventy. Yeah. A little, little crosswind from the left, it feels like.
century over there. Yeah, that's uh, that's on the to-do list. Oh, all right. Okay, 1495, runway 18, winds 1737, clear option. We had the option, runway 18, cap 1495. They used to make you, in cat they used to make you wait till you had a hundred hours to do that, but you don't have to anymore. Yep, probably still a good idea to wait that uh, long. You know, keep flying a little bit longer, yeah. So we're going to check Buxton. Okay. Uh, left base. Okay. And the landing checklist is still complete. Uh, 
on the end of the okay. runway. The runway. Not the pavement that's not usable right now, but the end of the runway.
tower, got 1495 on left downwind runway 184, touch and go. 
Sounds good, thanks. Uh, have a good one. Oh, should I not have... In yeah, that so Papa, you can uh, main, uh, resume uh, normal operations. We'll just get All back. Right, on to go, and we'd like to return right back here for one. Okay. Roger, that's so, no big deal. Seven. Traffic currently uh, entering a mid-left downwind as an experimental landing runway 18. Zero hotel, Papa. Get off the end of the runway. Nine, Delta hotel, okay. runway 18, winds 170. Off the runway right and here, and let's see the before we land. All oh, that's good field. about landing. There's going to be landing in that field as well, remaining west of runway 18. Flaps come in. Right, Flaps are up. Cover the heat's way. cold. Lights is required. We can turn that off. We can turn the strobes off. And mixture lean. We'll go ahead and lean that mixture a little bit. And pin the heat off. Okay. Now, what were you saying? Uh, should I not have pinned in 7700? Oh, it doesn't matter. That's okay. fine. That's the first time <laughs> that's happened to me. Well, you know, it, it was just strange because we weren't getting as much power as we Dude, should have. Do you think that had anything to do with me giving it full power while carb heat was still out? No, no, it well, shouldn't have. We pushed that in, it should have. Yeah. Just. Yeah, that's right. Huh. Are we in a cat? We're going to taxi back there. Well, I declare an emergency because we were doing something strange, you know. So I wanted. I wanted to tell him, hey, we're landing on 3-1, I don't care what you do, Yeah. you know, I don't care what you want, get them out of the way, but I don't think we were any priority or anything like that, so no big deal, but don't care for that, what happened right there, so we're going to go up here and we're going to do an engine run up and see if we can, see if we can duplicate the, that uh, situation. Yeah. Need any help getting back? I hope not. <laughs> I don't think so. But I don't know that I'm going to take it back there. I'm going to take it right up in here, and we'll do an engine run up. Yeah, not pelt our cars with rocks. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was fun. Well, we might have different different definitions of fun there. <laughs> that was pretty scary. Uh, I wouldn't. I mean, yeah, you know, it just made sense. Well, we can get it back around. There, there's a runway. Let's land on it, yeah. even if it's downwind. Yeah, okay. The procedures would have just told us to go straight. Well, but we still had engine RPM. Yeah. You know, that's it wasn't a thing. A complete failure. Exactly. It had been a complete failure if you put on the brake there. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're gonna do an engine run up here. Everybody back there. Here's normal right there, okay. Yeah, that's good. Huh. Next turn on a mind up at a turn right, next taxiway and taxiway to park via Alpha. Okay. Uh, thank you, I'll stay off the track. Alright, that looks okay. Let's go ahead and run it on up here. The full power. That was getting good RPM. Yeah. That feels, I mean, that feels normal right there. Shoot, man, I hate these intermittent, intermittent problems. But RPM's coming up a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Quite a bit, actually. Almost 100. Yeah. Cap 1495, Billy Tower, are you still up? Affirmative for Cap 1495. Cap 1495, Roger that. Just letting you know, um, wasn't quite sure whenever you took off on that last touch and go, there was a little bit of uh, smoke coming out of the aircraft, it appeared to be. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. Didn't know if it was like fuel dumping for some reason or whatever. I just figured I'd let you know. Uh, it shouldn't have been any fuel dumping, but uh, we certainly weren't, weren't getting uh, as much... Uh, power as we uh, normally get, so we came around for the 3-1. Sounds good. Yeah, I saw that, and then you were like, yeah, we need a way, and I was like, well, yeah, that might be a little uh, a little problematic. Exactly. But fortunately, we had enough power to make the runway. Sounds good. Have a good one. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, brakes off? Yeah, brakes off. I don't know what to do now, you know? Yeah. What do you... Uh, I don't know. Well, what we can do, we can tax it back and put it in the hangar, and I'll go down here and talk to Heinen and, and have them look it over. All right. That's, that's about the only thing we can do, I think, at this point. Okay. So, I'll go ahead and tax back. And Cap 1495, we're going to tax it back to uh, the uh, hangar.
Roger, let's prove the Alpha. But yeah, we definitely didn't get as much RPM as we needed. Yeah, I tried the mixture. Sometimes it feels like uh, we were just getting too much mixture. If he said we had a black puff of smoke. Well... Yeah. Uh, sign of too much? That could be too rich a mixture. Rich, okay. Yeah. Huh. What was the problem with the mixture control you previously had with this? Well, it... Kind of the same thing, like it was running too rich. Oh. Huh. That's why I tried that first of all and couldn't really get it, so... Okay, and let's get that checklist back out. Alright. And for the uh, securing the aircraft checklist, we did the wing flaps, carburetor heat, lights as required, and uh, pitot heat. And park and brake set, uh, we won't turn it on right now. Transponder, 1200, and ELT 121.5, confirm. Nope, it's not going. All right. And uh, throttle to idle, it is, and... Uh, magnetos check for ground. Do you do? Have you done this before? No. Okay. Then the way to do it is go. Uh, just take the magneto switch. Go to right mag. So two clicks over now. Very quickly, off and back on. See, and that right there, we just checked that the magnetos are grounded. Okay. okay. In other words, when that key is off, the mags are off. Yeah. And that's how to check it, and that's what oh, they like yeah. you to do, yeah. Okay. Because there is a failure mode that the magnetos can be on. Yeah, and then you and drop and... Yeah, even if the key's out, yeah. you know. Well, we know that's not the case in this in this one. And then mixture, well, it should avionics power switch, first of all, off. And then mixture idle cut off. Zero cockpit terminate, and... Ignition switch off. Okay. And a master switch, alt and bat off. All right. And control avionics lock install. You can put the control lock in. And let's see. So everything's off. Yes, yes. Park and brake off. We see they have you put it on, then they have you take it off. off. Uh, Whatever. Okay, and then uh, fuel selector left or right for the refuel. Okay, and Peter tube cover will install and OBS and TAC record, aircraft secure and lock, flight plan closed. All right, okay. Yeah, well, that was interesting. Well, that's good first world experience. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess experience is good, yep. but First of all, what do you do? Fly the plane. Fly the plane. Right. And we had good speed, so that really wasn't a problem. You know, we had good speed all the way around there. So that was good.